notebook here and as you can tell I have Merlin and me both in the video today so I did just grab him out of his cage he was sleeping and I just picked him up so today's video is going to be reacting to you guys this crazy chinchilla stories I asked you to leave me some and guys I have so many so I'm also just want to say Thank you if you gave me a story, I really appreciate it, but I might not be putting people's names on like in the story just because I know that some people ask me not to include theirs and I just want to make it simple for everybody and just not include names. So that being said, let's just jump right into the video. I don't know if I can have, as you can see, I don't know if I can have Merlin in the whole video because he's going to get really restless and he's just, you know, he's going to overheat in my hand. So I will put him back in the cage. But I'll see how long I can hold him out here for. I, oh, by the way, I have not read any of these stories, so these are my first initial reactions. I'm just reading them for the first time. So this person says, One time my chinchilla pig was hopping around my room and somehow got up, oh my word, and somehow got up on my dresser, which she had never done before, and decided it was a good idea to jump into my fish tank. It was terrifying. I got her out immediately and dried her off. It was a year. It was years ago, and she's 100% okay now. Wow, that is so scary. Okay, you know what else is scary? If I lose Merlin. So what's really, yeah. <laughs> I have never dropped. I've I've had my chinchillas escape many times. Merlin actually got behind the washer and dryer one time, and I thought I was literally going to like lose him because there's a hole in the wall that leads to the entire house. So I was really scared. But I've never accidentally almost dropped my chinchilla or lost them in. The toilet or a fish tank or the sink so that is definitely scary and I'm glad that you got her like dried off fast because that's scary one time I had the top level doors of my chinchilla cage open and forgot they were open I was organizing supplies that were under the cage when all of a sudden I see one of my chinchillas jumping down from the top level and onto the floor of my bedroom it was so scary thank God I grabbed her and put her back in the cage. She was also thankfully not injured from her insane jump. Okay, I've had Merlin also jump from the top level. I feel like to every one of these stories, I'm just gonna ha somehow relate it to my chinchilla. But pretty much, I've had Merlin do that too. It really scares me. Chinchillas, I've heard that they can jump up to, like I think, a yard. So it's like three feet in the air. That's really high. As you guys know, chinchillas are very fragile animals. They have very thin bones, so it scares me so bad when they jump off high things because they can break their bones so easily. In my old house, I let my chinchilla play in the upstairs bathroom. I normally let her out in the downstairs one, but it was being repaired. So apparently there is a small gap between the sink counter and the floor. It was small enough for me to not notice and she climbed into it. Wait, so there was a gap between the sink counter and the floor. Oh wow. I thought it was okay because she couldn't get anywhere, so I let her stay down there. About an hour later, she falls out of the ceiling of the downstairs bathroom. It's on the opposite side of the house. So it sounds like she still got into the house's structure. I closed the bathroom door so she couldn't have gotten out through there. There goes Merlin. I closed the bathroom door so she couldn't have gone out through there. Then I realized that she must have gotten into the AC pipes or those gaps in the walls on the floors. Okay, so... Merlin, I had to come back because he was just not having it and totally understandable. He doesn't really like to be held. So anyway, this story is probably the craziest one. I have, like, this is like the second or third story and that's, that's really crazy. Like, your chinchilla fell out of the ceiling. That is so scary if Merlin, if Merlin, wow. You know, I'm just thankful that you found your chinchilla because to lose your chinchilla would be the worst thing ever and then not know what happened to it. That would be terrifying. One time I was at a pet store and I asked if I could pet the chinchilla. The lady said yes and opened a part of the area they were in. I started petting them when they weren't running around when suddenly one jumped out and started running all over the floor and everyone was trying to catch it. Okay, if you lose a chinchilla in a store, like I don't I don't know if this was like a huge one like PetSmart or Petco, but if you lose a chinchilla, odds are you are not going to get that chinchilla. <laughs> like chinchillas are really hard to catch because they run fast and when they're scared, they will not, they're done. They're going to run, they're going to hide, they're not coming out. So that's definitely a situation I would, something that would happen to me honestly at a pet store, a big one. My chinchillas both jumped out of their cage at night and was out all night. When we woke up, they were chewing, they were chewed all of the skirting board. Okay, if that's crazy, like to lose your chinchilla in the middle of the night and not know how long they've been out, what they've gotten access to, that would have scared me so bad. 
like, <laughs> especially if they like eat something you don't even know. Like, are you supposed to take them to the vet? I don't know. Once my chinchilla slipped past me when I was cleaning her cage, so she got out and ran around the whole house. We found her, but she had crawled into the couch, so we had to pull out the entire couch and lead her out using an apple slice. We finally got her after an hour or so. That sounds like me and my first chinchilla because we used to have the cage in the living room and me and my brother we were younger. And so like we would open the cage door to play with the chinchilla and the poor thing was terrified. And he ran, he would like always escape. He would always run out or we would take him and hold him and then lose him. And so like that thing, that thing, that chinchilla <laughs> would run around the whole house. We would chase the chinchilla, we named it Timmy. We would chase that chinchilla around for hours and that thing was so traumatized but like yeah i can relate to you my old cage broke and my chinchilla chip escaped i woke up in the middle of the night because i felt something on my face and my chin was on my pillow right in front of my face i got scared is it still filming hey mention something about amazon affiliates okay. and put multiple links anything that has to do with merlin if it's under that little barcode okay see it doesn't matter product you could even you could recommend grocery bags okay Pants. <laughs> just let me finish anything <laughs> that was my brother. He gets like really excited over Amazon affiliates because I recently got that started and he's like super excited for me to anyways. Sorry about that. So basically, back to the story. I've never had my chinchilla in my room before, like to sleep with me. But I'm pretty sure if I woke up with Merlin on my face or next to my face, I would fling him into the next universe, which is a good thing because which is a bad thing, but like it's a good thing that he's not in my room because mm, no. Okay, so this is a long one, so bear with me. I'm, I'm trying to read these well. I don't know how I'm reading these. I hope I'm not like super annoying and sound like I've never had a day of education in my life, but we'll try. So, scariest chinchilla story that ever happened to my chinchilla was probably when I was playing with him. And I had a Chick-fil-A meal that I didn't clean up from last night. My chinchilla honey got onto my desk and then upon realizing what was on my desk, a plate with a half open Chick-fil-A sauce, I immediately jumped up, which in turn scared Honey as her entire back leg was covered in the sauce. I was freaking out, I immediately put her in the dust bath, it was too much it was too much for the dust to strip out and immediately called my mom. We looked up things we could do and that was to use water, but oil and water do not mix, so we had to make a bowl with warm water and Dawn soap and lightly cleaned her off, but she is definitely full of spunk and does not silt still. So to calm her down, she streamlined, fed her quite a bit of goji berries until all that was left was for her to clean up herself. Aftermath was a little knot that eventually came out. Lesson learned, always clean up after a meal. <laughs> That's actually kind of cute though. Like I can imagine the struggle of this. This would probably stress me out to max and I'd be like, hurry, get it out. Like don't want to dry in the fur. And then the chinchilla is freaking out. And you don't want to break their trust. You don't want to break their bond but you want to clean them up and everything. But at the same time, that's kind of cute that your chinchilla first was named Honey. I love that name. This one time when I was trying to put my chinchilla in his cage for the night, his little paw somehow got stuck in the little metal part in the cage. It was really scary, especially because he was squeaking, not in a good way. That is super scary. Um, I don't know if I should say this because you guys are really think <laughs> badly of me, but this happened not with Merlin, but my first chinchilla ever. So, <laughs> He didn't have a coordination. We had this little cage. It was, re it was really stupid. It was from PetSmart and it was like super flimsy. And so the cage, the door was one of those doors that you like push. It was like about this big, it's like a square foot. And you basically just like push it in. And I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, so I got my chinchilla's foot caught in there because his little paw was there. And I like pushed it in because I didn't see his paw. And I was like latching the thing and the sounds he was just squeaking trying to pull away and immediately like it was in a matter of seconds i quickly got the cage door open but like i when you hurt such a small creature on accident it's so bad like it makes me feel terrible so anyway back to the story i even started crying but i got his paw out and he ran off he couldn't use that paw for a day or two so he just ran with one don't worry he's fine and it was a minor inconvenience all well and it was an accident I am new and a chin care owner, so this was quite the scare. I would never hurt my sweet baby on purpose. Yes, of course. Like, accidents happen. That doesn't mean you're a bad owner. One time, one of my girls had somehow managed to escape her cage. I think I foolishly forgot to close it entirely. I was freaking out, looking everywhere for her, and she was literally nowhere to be found. Eventually, I started to search outside my room. It seemed like she had escaped somehow through the window. I honestly thought I had lost her. 
okay, I know the feeling. I definitely know the feeling. Like, I've said this a million times, I've lost my chinchillas, but it's one thing when you're in the room with them and they jump out and then you're looking for them. It's like another thing when you walk into the room and your chinchilla cage is empty and it's so nerve wracking and you just go into this panic mode. It's a terrible feeling. I hope, if it's never happened to you, I hope you never have to feel it because it's really bad. Okay, so I went to bowl, to, I went to my bed to bowl my eyes out and saw a fluffy, a bowl of fluffy sleeping in between a bunch of teddy bears I just so happened to have. That is actually such a cute, like, way to find your chinchilla. Um, I guess they just, she was attracted to the soft object in the bed, so she wanted to sleep there. When I was cleaning my chinchilla's cage, my chinchilla's name is Dustin, I left a plastic bag near his cage. It was because I was about to change the bedding. I left for like 10 minutes and he pulled the plastic bag into his cage. Sounds very familiar. When I came back to the plastic bag, it was ripped pretty badly. I immediately took the plastic bag out. I freaked out and took him to the vet. He was totally fine and he thinks that he spit it out. Oops. Yes, don't feel bad because this has happened to me too. It's actually the weirdest objects. Um, one of them was a towel that was just like sticking like halfway in the cage. Another one was a broom. And I'm pretty sure we still have the same broom. Let me actually go check because I'm pretty sure we still have the same broom. But like my first, no, it was Merlin. It was Merlin. He chewed, no, I feel like it was my first chinchilla. He chewed a bunch of bristles straight off it. So let me go check if we still have it because if we do, I definitely want to show you what it looks like. So it turns out that I do have it and this is the broom. So as you can see, it's like the, it's like a big one that you use for the house. And as you can see, I don't know if it's focused. But yeah, a bunch of bristles are gone. They're like all short over there. I opened their door to clean their cage, not realizing my one chin was sitting on the ledge on the door. <coughs> he jumped down and escaped in my apartment. I had to chase him down and he doesn't like to be picked up, so I had to grab a blanket and basically just smother him. He was not happy. That is actually a tip I recommend. If you ever lose your chinchilla and you just cannot catch them or you're afraid to catch them because you don't want to like crush them or grab them the wrong way, Grab a sweater or a light blanket and just throw it right on top of them and they'll just be like a little ball and then carefully and gently scoop them up in the ball and take them back to the cage. Do this quickly because obviously they can overheat and you don't want them to get too hot and like suffocate. If you leave them in there for a long time they will suffocate and die. Okay, so this next story is I have two chinchillas, gray and beige brothers, Chimmy and Changa. Those are really cute names. They're almost two years old. I've had them since they were babies. About a year after having them, I went to check on them and Chongo was hanging upside down with his head, with his leg stuck in the hay rack. I panicked at first. I didn't even know he was alive until I was trying to get him out of the rack. I rushed him to the nearest exotic vet and had to leave him overnight. It was so sad and stressful. I go back the next day after he had been checked out and given x-rays and was shocked to find out his leg was not broken. I have absolutely no idea how that could have happened. He was literally hanging upside down suspended from the hay rack. He could have been hanging there for hours, which terrified me. I felt so bad. So that is actually another really scary story. I don't know which is worse, the one where we were out all night, the one that Chinchilla literally fell from the ceiling, or this one. Like, that. that's really scary because, oh my word, imagine walking into your cage, and into the room, and looking at your cage, and your Chinchilla's hanging upside down, and they're not alive. Like, I'm so glad this Chinchilla was alive, and that they're fine now because... That would have freaked me out. My crazy chin story is that my chinchilla accidentally fell into a water bucket when I was cleaning up their cage. I picked him up very fast and ran into the bathroom to get the blow dryer. I dried him and now he's fine. Yeah, that's something Merlin would do, which is why I can never have a bucket of water around his cage. Once I took my chinchilla outside for five minutes for some fresh air and he jumped out of my hands and ran around my front porch and I got so freaked out. Yeah, first of all, I don't really recommend you take your chinchilla outside, but if you are going to take your chinchilla outside, even just for some fresh air really quick, which is not my permission to like go do that, but I'm just saying, if you are, definitely make sure that you do not just take it out with your hands because like I said, chinchillas, in one second they're fine, just in second second they're just scrambling, they're jumping, they're flying, they're out, and you could lose them really easily, especially outside, so make sure you have them like in a cage or something, I don't know. I took Smokey and Bandit, which is their chinchillas, out for playtime and Smokey really likes to jump into things. I was sitting in a chair with a garbage can next to me. It was pretty tall and Smokey jumped in my lap. He then jumped in the rest and jumped into the trash can. Into the armrest and jumped into the trash can and I felt so bad that I couldn't stop laughing. I picked him up and he just seemed just fine. A little shook but that's all. 
I think I've actually caught on tape before Merlin jumping into, like, not on tape, but like, I was videotaping, I was, I was filming a video, videotaping sounds really old fashioned, but I was filming a video and Merlin literally just jumped right into the trash can, which is really cute, it's funny, like, some things that chinchillas get into or they get themselves hurt, like, minor, it's actually kind of funny, like, not to sound terrible here, but that is funny, okay, if your chinchilla ends up in a trash can, I'm gonna laugh at it, so... <coughs> when I let my chins run around, I would always like see. I really hope you can't hear my family. <laughs> I would always see Milo out and running and playing, but Lewis was just hiding. I later found wait, where am I? I later found out he was just in one of those shelves and eating out of an oak jar. I would bring my chinchilla Bentley into a little enclosed area for about an hour and at a time, twice a day. So one day I brought him in into an enclosed area, this was by the way when we first got him, but anyway I brought him into the bathroom for the first time and he jumped on my head and then I was like oh this is a cute picture so then I took a picture to find him pooping and peeing all over my head, it's disgusting. I did happen to feel some warm dr stuff drip down my back but never knew what it was. Then I stood up to take the picture and he attacked the camera. <laughs> that whole story is just, it's golden. Um, but first of all, that is disgusting and 100% sounds like something a chinchilla would do. <laughs> so my sister used to have a hamster. He passed away about a year ago and her bedroom was right next to mine. She didn't know much about hamsters and the cage she was in had a few issues, but overall her hamster lived a very happy life. I was trying to fall asleep one night when I heard my chinchilla making an irritated sound, so I got up to see what was the matter and lo and behold, Teddy, my sister's hamster, is inside my chinchilla's cage trying to act, interact with my chinchilla and he wasn't having it lol that's terrible i have often thought about what would happen if two different rodents just ended up in the same cage like they would probably not take it very well especially merlin because he's like really territorial but that that is actually really scary especially since the hamster is so much smaller than a chinchilla I panicked and took Teddy the hamster back to his cage straight away. Okay guys, so I think I'm just going to end the video here. Of course, I didn't read all of the stories, so if you guys put a story in and I said thank you, I appreciate it, and then didn't read it in this video, just know it's because I didn't really have that much time to go through all of them. I got a lot of stories. Thank you guys so much for participating. I really appreciate it when I put things on my stories and ask you guys questions and you give me your feedback and you give me like inspiration and stories and all this kind of stuff. I really love it and appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for that. And if you guys want or need anything for your chinchilla and it's on Amazon, and even if it's like not for your chinchilla, whatever, I will be having a link in the description box. It is going to be, the link is going to take you to a chinchilla cage in Midwest Critter Nation. And you don't need to buy that cage. You can buy anything off Amazon for your chinchilla or anything, honestly, if you wanna buy yourself sunglasses doesn't matter anything if you use the link in the description box that I have below it gives me a small percentage of commission it just like I said helps me Merlin out a little bit but yeah that's gonna be an Amazon affiliate link is always going to be linked in the description box of every single video from here on out so if you are ever in the future wanting to buy anything off Amazon for your chinchilla then just use my link thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video are you gonna tell me where you went? All the messages I sent with no reply